This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Skylight Theater for the world premiere of Lord of the Underworld's Home for Unwed Mothers. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Tony Abadamarco. Great to see you. And what did you do tonight? Uh, I was the director of Louisa Hill's play, Lord of the Underworld's Home for Unwed Mothers at Skylight Theater. The first time I read it, I just went wild. It was exactly the kind of play that I love to dip my, my toe in. It's just got um, pathos, and it's, it's theatrical, and the language is uh, sometimes comical and sometimes lyrical and sometimes so moving and I just it's poetic and I just went crazy for it so I really wanted to do it right away I love the piece also I felt it, it basically appealed to me intellectually it, it actually touched me spiritually too which I, I don't get a whole lot I, I, it was very respectful but also wasn't overpowering and, and also uh, also I love the cast members that you chose too the casting was a delight actually when we found each one of these four actors we just went crazy because we knew that they were perfectly suited to all these roles. So that was really a delight. What do you look for in your casting for this piece? Well, I always look for intelligence and resilience in actors, and also actors who aren't stuck in their heads, but have a, an ability to also translate their emotional world into their body. So the combination of that for all of these, com I'm going to name them, Amy Harmon, Adrian Gonzalez, Michaela Slezak, and Corinne Cummings. They all just drove me wild. They were so right for this. So I knew we were in good standing as soon as we had them together. You know, one thing when I was sitting through the piece, I was I was looking at the male characters, and I hate male characters who are just like '50s sitcom guys who are perfect. They're all they know better than everyone else. They're really nice. Those were the characters I saw tonight. I was disturbed by it until towards the end that I realized, you know, in a decision like this, men, they, they're they're not a part of this. Yeah. I I couldn't feel the ethos. I couldn't feel the, the total passion of this play because mm -hmm. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. That's not my decision. I'm not a part of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I you know I find that even though it, it's easy to sort of point the finger and say it's the guy's fault or you know to create a villain out of them, I. I find that with this kind of intelligent acting and this kind of writing, it's there's so many more layers that you can find that you can create more empathetic and universal characters. So, you know, yeah, they're, they, in some ways they're stuck in that time, in that post-war period of, you know, just abiding by the white picket fence rules um, that made America prosperous, and I put that in quotes. Um, but in fact, uh, it, there's so much more underneath this in terms of you know, revealing a lot about society of the time and about the necessity to move those those uh, parameters out of the way. And I'm just hoping and praying to God that we're not on our way back to it. Yeah. One more thing. I have to ask you this question. You know, I once interviewed a director and she told me one of the she told me something personal about her life. She said she had an abortion. Yeah. I cut that piece out of the interview. I said, well, I don't want this to be about politics. The real reason I did it, I was trying to protect her, because this goes on forever. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, something's wrong here. I mean, is this news I'm cutting, I'm editing? Sometimes I feel I was saying, hey, this woman needs to be protected. Mm -hmm. I got to protect her because she doesn't know what she's doing. Good for you. No, but the thing about it is, do I have a right to do that? I mean, am I looking down at her or something? I ask that all the time. I ask that to a female editor of mine. She said, no, she would have done the same thing. But I, I can't. I can't feel that this shouldn't be. This shouldn't be right. I should be able to do. She should be able to say that. She well, should have a right to do that. I, I think it's wonderful that you're actually questioning that in yourself because this isn't up to us as men to make these decisions. It really isn't. And I think that it's really important for women to be able to preserve their reproductive rights and you know of course there's a discussion that goes on when the man is culpable and, and wants to be involved but I really think this is this is it's my belief that this is a woman's right to choose and so you know the alternatives are are deadly and have been deadly and ugly and and wrong and you know they're subjugating women uh, and that is absolutely wrong in my book so if this is really a country about equality 
responsibility for all of them. We better live up to that. Okay. Once again, I really love the piece. I thought it was fascinating. Even though, again, I know if I were a woman, I would have loved it even more. But I still love the piece. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Spread the word, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you once again for being on the show. Great to see you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with? Louisa Hill. I wrote the play for the Lord of the Underworld's Home for Unwed Mothers. I love this piece. I thought it was fantastic. But the thing about it is, I'm a man. I know very well if I was a woman, I would have gotten a lot more out of this thing. Well, I think it's a story for everybody because I think it's a story about people wanting to have connections with other people but, but making mistakes along the way. So I, I feel like it's a story for everybody, even if the specifics don't apply to them. So why did you decide to write this piece? I came across this book called The Girls Who Went Away by Anne Fessler, and it's a oral history of women who were sent to homes for unwed mothers in the years post-World War II, but pre-Roe v. Wade, and I've never cried more reading a book. I was so compelled by the stories, and it was this part of American history that I had no idea about, about the baby scoop era, where four million women were sent to these homes um, if, if they were unmarried and pregnant, and then they were coerced into giving up their children. So it was this big part of American history that I had no idea about. So I just found that idea very compelling, and uh, so I, I knew that I needed to explore it in a play. And so I wrote it when I was at the University of Iowa. It was my thesis play for my um, graduate degree. Yeah, a very brilliant piece. And again, I'm, I'm surprised that you're actually so young that you actually wrote such a such a wonderful piece. Oh, thank you. I have. Um, I was very inspired by the history and also by Greek mythology and Bible stories. So I had a, a well of material to inspire me. Yeah, I like the spiritual aspect because again, in theater, we don't get a whole lot of that. I thought it was done very respectfully. I thought it was done even handily too. Um, I am happy to hear that you um, saw that I portrayed it fairly. I um, I have a lot of reverence for. For spirituality, I also know that it, sometimes it's used to, to the, the consequences or the effects of it um, is that it, it can be misused, and um, I think that it's it's very complex. So I'm happy to hear that you took nuance in the representation from it. You know, maybe you can answer a question. Mike. I once did an interview with the director. She was a female director. She told me in the interview she had an abortion, uh -huh. and I cut it out. Okay. A part of me was doing. I, I told her I don't want I don't want this to get too political and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. The real reason behind it is, you know, I knew very well the interview would last forever and she may regret it in the future. Sure. But I can't feel, help but feel that something's wrong here. I mean, I shouldn't have to do this. Sure. It's the news. I'm cutting something out. Part of me was feeling that, you know, I, I'm just looking down at this woman. I'm saying, I have to protect you. You yeah. need me to help you. Yeah. And that's just something's just wrong about that. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I I, I think that that's a, yeah, it's a very complex issue. Um, I think that if a woman is comfortable talking about it, then she should be able to do it without without any shame. But I, I do recognize the sensitivity in different communities. Yeah, I, I'm really compelled by the pro voice movement, um, which is which distinguishes itself from like the the pro life versus pro choice movements in that it's all about opening up the, um, the sh sharing the mic for women to just tell their experiences. And and uh, because there are a lot of nuances to it, some just because somebody might feel sadness about having an abortion doesn't mean that she necessarily regrets it. I think there are a lot of layers, and, and sometimes the, the binary of pro-life versus pro-choice um, can make it more stark and black and white. Um, so I, I think it's uh, really powerful when women do tell their stories. Once again, I really love the piece. I thought it was riveting. I thought it was fantastic. Something that's actually very very relevant nowadays. Uh, 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 once again, I really love this. Thank you very much for being on the show. Okay, thank you so much. It was lovely to talk to you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with... Corinne Cummins. I'm originally from Chicago, and, and then I did theater there for a short period of time before coming out to Los Angeles, and I've been doing um, almost exclusively new work for about a decade now. I played D. D is smart as a whip. She is determined, and um, she she has a beautiful, deep, and rosy outlook on life. I really love this piece. I love your performance in it too. I thought you felt you played your character pretty well, right into a preteen to, to to a mother. 
you just embody the character extremely well. Thank you. Um, I feel like that's totally my wheelhouse. I often play characters like that. I have like an eight-year-old girl hiding inside of me, super close to the to the outside. You know. So, what are your thoughts on this piece? I mean, is it first, first of all, I'm a man. I, some part of me says that I'm not going to understand this as well as a woman is because because I'm a man, right? The reproductive story is actually a woman's story. Men are more observers in the world. Limit men by saying that they don't understand it. I, I, uh, I see a lot of plays that are by men about men that I think myself as a woman understands very deeply. So, but it is it is a play about women. Um, it's written by a woman. There's a lot of women involved, and uh, I, I often think about bodily autonomy and women's struggle to control their own bodies and their lives. And I think that is very deeply uh, explored in this play. Also, kind of like the spiritual flavor of it. Again, it, you know, it was done very respectfully. But also, it's it's kind of like reproduction, kind of giving life. It's a spiritual story too, and that can't be denied. So, so I, I really felt that in, in the message. Yeah, um, I I studied childbirth. I've, I've never, I don't have any children, but I studied childbirth and the spiritual aspect of it, and. Uh, and I actually studied childbirth outside of a hospital because this, it, my character was left alone to labor in a room by herself. So I studied what women do when they're by the, when they're not in a hospital and they give birth. Once again, I thought you did a fantastic performance. I love the story. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm here with. Hi, my name is Adrian Gonzalez. I'm an actor. I've been in LA working for about eight years and. I uh, moved out of here from Chicago, studied at Northwestern, and uh, have been pursuing acting out here. I'm loving it. I played the male chorus. I played. I'd like to say I played all the men. <laughs> yeah. What's your take on the men? I mean, any kind of common themes? Any kind of differences? Uh, many differences. Um, I love. I mean, they, they they all approach it with love for the most part. There's a huge. Uh, there's there's a big support around love and and taking care of of the other person. It's just fun, like they're just so different and they're really out to get what they want and it's just, it's a really fun part. You know, I always look at characters and the characters I like are deeply flawed. You played some flawed characters, but a lot of characters you played were kind of your typical male who was like, you know, the leading man who's basically nice, who's good, who can't doesn't have any flaws and all that. I really don't like characters like that. And then I look through the story and I realize something about the story of reproduction. Men really aren't that highly connected to the story. We're more observers than anything else. What are your thoughts on that? Well, completely. I mean, the men were sort of separate at this time. It wasn't really their place to sort of discuss these issues. It was a women's issue, so they would really push them out. Um, I especially see that when with the father in this story. The father really didn't understand what was going on. It wasn't his place, so he really felt disconnected with how he could help his daughter. Or you see that with with um, Eddie, who I think is a very flawed character, because uh, he's really out for himself. Um, and he really doesn't take into consideration how she feels or what she wants. The only one who was my favorite is Billy, who really just came from a place of sensitivity and love and just really, really cared for her and what was going on with her and didn't judge her for, for anything. So. But this isn't a story about men. It's a story about what happened to these women, and it's it's unfathomable that that this could happen to women, especially now when you know they, they're people. They, they we have the right to do whatever it is with their their own bodies. So um, yeah. Yeah, you're also Latino by heritage, from your name. Yeah. I noticed there was a bit of a Catholic theme to this story, and I thought it was very well done. It was respectful. It showed the it showed the burdens behind it and the guilt behind it. But I thought again, it was it was it added a lot of flavor to the piece. Well, I mean, the Catholic flavor it was there. That wasn't that wasn't sort of an added thing. It was that's what actually happened. That it was a Catholic faith that that did that. I went to Catholic school all my life, so I really identified with it. And I'm not a practicing Catholic, but I am a Catholic by culture and by ritual. But um, but yeah, it, it, it adds a stake, it adds uh, 
another layer to what this story is and why these people behave the way they behave. I feel also it's a spiritual because it's like giving birth is like this tribal thing. It's like this, this is humanity and you have to tie that in spirituality. So there's no separate. It's still part of reality that has to be addressed. Whether we avoid it, whether we deal with it, whether we improve upon it, it's still kind of important. And I like the fact that they didn't shy away from saying, oh no, we can't talk about this. You know what I mean? No, I don't think Louisa Hill, the playwright, she, I don't think she shied away about talking about anything. She really wanted to throw it in your face. She wanted you to see this and she wanted you to make sure that you you understood what was going on. Which That's why I think this is a brilliant comedy in the sense that like, it's kind of absurd the way these these things happened. And, and I think that's how you, you feel intensely for these characters, but it also makes you laugh, which makes it equally entertaining. Yeah. Once again, I really love your, your characters because you know you went into multi characters. I always love it when actors do that because it's like you force yourself into several characters all in one play, turning on a dime and all that. I think you did it beautifully. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, I really love the piece. Loved you in it. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Amy Harmon. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm an actor in Los Angeles. I've been living here for 12 years. I do a lot of theater, television, lots of commercials, and voiceover, and this is my first show with Skylight Theater Company. I play the female chorus member, female ensemble, so I play about 12 characters in the play, actually. What's your take on those characters? Any kind of similarities, any kind of differences? whoever your favorite character was and all that? It's hard to have a favorite because I, you know, I love them all for lots of different reasons. There's definitely similar similarities between um, Kate, who is Dee's mom, and then this guidance counselor that she meets when she's in the home. And, you know, they both just have a, a world view that feels very similar. Um, so I think that they are of the same cloth and from the same space, which makes them feel a bit connected. Um, uh, and they're both two people in Dee's life telling her telling her no, essentially, telling her that she doesn't have a choice. So there's something really familiar um, in, in them in that space. Um, and then when we move on into um, Corey's world, I think they're all very, very different, but the through line is how they all disappoint, uh, even though they're supposed to create family. Yeah, I really love the piece. I thought it was fantastic. But some, a part of me says that, well, because I'm a man, I'm not going to understand something. I'm not going to feel the the raw emotions that a woman would feel if, if, if you know if, if she were seeing this piece. Did you feel that way? Oh yeah, I did. I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. But I kind of know she was going through agony. She was crying. I feel that if I was a woman, I would be crying too. But again, you know, maybe that's just the reason because this is a you know the reproduction issue is, is a woman's issue. I, I'm the men is kind of more of a uh, observer. You know, I I think it's a human issue. And I think that, of course, someone experiencing it from the perspective of having a child inside of them, it'll be different. But I imagine that every human watching this can understand what it might feel like to lose a child. Man or woman or non-binary would feel the deep loss of family and of a choice that isn't theirs. And I think that that's really the story that Louisa is trying to tell, is that... Um, D didn't have a choice, and that's what's so important about this piece. That's another thing I've noticed. Uh, well, for the male characters, you know, I, I I see how it's not kind of their, none of their business. For the you played the female characters, I kind of felt that they were, they were a little disrespectful of, of, of her also. That they were kind of not keeping, not respectful of her choice, not understanding the whole situation, putting their own opinion and judgments upon it. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that Louisa did a very good job of representing a very specific time in, in history. We opened the play in 1965, and you have to remember that, we all have to remember that at that time, women were not allowed to make their own choices. So, the mother, the counselor, the nun, these women are coming from a perspective of knowledge, of, of shame, 
of hatred, of dismissal from society, and they come from a place to protect D from things that they themselves have experienced. And yes, in our modern, you know, world, we look at that and would say disrespect, unacknowledgement of her own choice. But those women are saying, you can't go out there like this as a single unwed mother because you will not be accepted into society. And that is a truth. It is a hard truth. It is a strange, almost uh, unbelievable truth that we all have to remember when we're watching this piece is that it was a completely different time and it was a shameful, shameful secret. And, you know, the book that Louisa read that inspired this is filled with stories just like this, which is incredible. But women weren't taught about sex, they weren't taught about their bodies, they weren't taught about how they had children. And then when they got pregnant, because there was no access to birth control, there was no access to abortion, there was no sex education, suddenly they were demonized. And um, that's the reality. So it might seem like a disrespect, but it's very of the moment that, of history that we are living in. You know, I, I wonder if you could ask, answer a question that I have. You know, once I did an interview with a director, and she told me right in the middle that she had an abortion, I cut it out of the interview. I said, well, I don't want this to be about politics or anything. The real reason behind it, I feel like I had to protect her because this, this will go on forever. But, yeah, but did, I just feel that, that I did something wrong. I mean, I shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to do no, that. No, I, I keep asking people, what would you have done in that situation? Would you have cut it out? I think it depends on the story you're trying to tell. Okay. <laughs> Once again, I really loved your performance. Thank I thought you. it was fantastic. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Michaela Slezak. I'm a 20-something year old in LA, just trying to make my way. I played Corey. She has gone through hell, and she's still able to be this sarcastic, funny person. I mean, she has this armor, and she's just trying so hard to keep it together, but these people keep coming into her life, and they're trying to break it apart, and she's still trying to keep it together. I love this piece. I thought it was fantastic. I love your acting also. In it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, if my viewers decide to come by and see this piece, what should they expect to see? They should expect a theatrical roller coaster. I mean, this play, it goes through so many facets of human life. Like the funny parts, the sad parts, the heartbreaking parts, the hopeful parts, the transcendent parts. Everything is in this play. I mean, you go through everything in this play, and the audience is just going right with us, which is incredible. Yeah, I love the piece. I love the spirituality that I touched upon, the good side and the bad side. Also, love the music. There's actually very good music on this. Oh my God. She's driving us through this whole show. I mean, and she wrote her own score. This is completely original work. She was incredible. The question, you know, some of the men, well, some of the men I like, they're, they're flawed characters. I love flawed characters. Some of the men I liked, some I didn't like because I thought they were like 50s throwbacks and all that. But then I thought to the, through the piece that, you know, in this kind of topic of reproductive rights, men really aren't the focus on it. They're actually observers more than anything else. But what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely not. I mean, there's this book that we all read called The Girls Who Went Away. I really recommend it. I mean, the men, it was the woman's choice or non-choice. Like, this was all something that they were dealing with. I mean, the men really weren't a part of it. They weren't the ones experiencing it. So, they really weren't included in the feelings and the trials and the tragedy. But, I mean, it's different now. Yeah, I still didn't like, I like it, though. And even though I know when I was looking at this, I think if I was a woman, I would just be crying right now. But even as a man, I really still enjoyed it. So, I did get a lot out of it. Yes, I mean, it's something that not really a lot of people know about. This baby scoop era. It happened post-World War II, continued until Roe versus Wade. This is a really significant time. I mean, we have a lot of older people that are coming to see the show, and so many people were affected by this epidemic. So many women were forced to give up their children for adoption. Like, they really didn't have that choice. And thank God, we're moving closer to a time where we're able to have that choice a lot more. I mean, the second act really proves that, I think. Maybe help me with a question. I've been wrestling with this for a long period of time. I interviewed a female director and she told me that she had an abortion right in the middle of my interview and I cut it out. Well, I told her I, I don't want it to, get, it to get too political but some part of it was because I wanted to protect her because this is going to be there forever and she may regret it in the future. And then I, I, while I was watching this play I was thinking to myself I'm, I, do, do I think I, did I feel I was trying to protect her that 
I'm better than her? She shouldn't she even have to hide from someone like that. What are your thoughts on that? Abortions are a very emotional experience. There's no denying that. But it's a choice that when it's chosen, it's chosen. And even though it is something very emotional that these women are going through, it's they're convicted. Like, there's conviction in that. They know that it's the right thing to do. So it's not something to be ashamed of. It's really not. We, we really need to have a bigger discussion on these experiences and not slip it under the rug as something shameful or something that's too personal. I mean, it's very personal, but I think we really have to talk to people about what they're going through to really understand what they're doing. A part of me says, you know, what's going on here? I mean, why, why do you even have to worry about this? But I think I'll, I'll still do the same thing if, 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 the, if the same situation happens. I mean, look, we're not in the post-abortion era yet. There's still states that are still trying to keep people from having their choice. And until we everyone is able to have that choice, we need to be talking about it. We need to. Like, we need to put it out there. We can't do anything else yet. Well, once again, I really love the piece. I loved you in it. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Lord of the Underworld's Home for Unwed Mothers will be playing at Skylight Theater from March 31st to May 14th. For more information, go to www.skylighttheatercompany.com.